This video is going to cover uploading various file types using active storage. This is based on a tutorial that we did for the real time chat room application in, I, I don't remember exactly which part, but it was one of the first 10 parts of the series where we had to upload uh, either images or videos, audio, or just regular files. And we wanted players for each if they had a player type. So like video or audio, you could click play and it'll play the, uh, the file so you can listen to it or watch it. Um, and then we also had the ability to click on a link to download a file or to view an image. So we're going to do something similar here with a bare bones application so that you don't have to watch eight parts of a series to figure out how to do this. So we're going to start by running a, uh, I think it's rails active underscore storage, uh, install command, maybe colon install is what the command is. I can never remember. looks like that worked. Now we can do a rails G scaffold. We'll create uh, I don't know, a post. We'll give each post a title just so that we have something to work with. And now that that's done, we can go ahead and run a rails DB colon migrate command, which will migrate the database. Now that that's done, let's come over to our application and we need to set up the actual active storage model real quick, which should be familiar. We're just going to come into app models post.rb. In here, we're going to say that a post, and I'm going to bump this up so you can see this, has one attached. And I guess we can call it a file. We can then come over to our controllers. Let me close all this. Uh, close that, close that, close that. We can come over to our controllers and our post controller, scroll down and at the bottom here, we can do comma colon file. If you decide to do something like has many attached files, you could then inside of your post controller, instead of doing comma file, you can do uh, files colon and then the array and that'll work similarly. So I'm going to leave it with file for now, but just be aware that that is an option. And as usual, you probably want to say dependent, dependent, colon, colon, destroy. So that if you delete a post, it deletes the attachment. Uh, now we're going to come into our views, our posts, and our form.html.erb. And then here we're going to create a div. We'll give this a uh, form label. So we'll say form.label for the file with a style of display colon block. You can then come down here and say form dot file underscore field for the file. If you were instead doing files, you would then want to say, I think it's multiple true, uh, which allows you to select multiple files for your files uh, list. In this case, I only have a file, so I'm going to leave it as file. Now that that's done, let's exit out of full screen and start the application. Uh, and let's actually come over to our routes.rb inside of our config folder and let's set a root. Say the root of the application should be the post controller index action. And we can save that. I'll come over here and I'll go to localhost port 3000, click new post, give it a test title and I'll choose a file. Uh, I have my test files here. I'll click on Conan and I'll click create post and we won't see anything. The reason is we have to actually display the attachment that we just created. You can see right here, we did update a blob. We did do something with the download. We did upload something, uh, but we're not seeing it. So let's come over to our actual uh, view partial. So our underscore post.html.erb. And in here, let's say we want to display the attachment. Now, in this case, it's an image but we should probably check if we have a post attached. And instead of just putting all of this in here, I'm going to create a partial. So I'll just say render the posts slash attachment partial. And let's pass in the post as the post. Let's go over to here, right click new file underscore attachment.html.erb. And in here, all we want to do is check if the post dot file dot attached question mark. So if we do have a file attached, then do whatever's in here. Uh, we can then, if you have bootstrap, you can create some uh, basic CSS for this. I'll just create it so you can see sort of how this was set up on the other application, but it really doesn't matter. Uh, we can then do a if post dot file dot image question mark. 
So this is going to return true if the attachment, our file attachment, is an image. If you have multiple images or multiple attachments and you want to iterate through them, just do something like post.files.each uh, do and then your file. And then you can basically follow along with what we're doing right here. But we only have one file. So if it is an image, then we want to, I guess, render it. And in this case, I gave each thing a custom class. I'm not going to replicate the CSS, but the basic idea is if you have any kind of scroll bar where these things get loaded in by giving them a class with a set size, instead of going based on the size of the actual image, that stops you from having your scroll bar jitter around as things pop in. The reason is your image that we're going to put in here. So like our image tag, our image is going to load in after the page loads, but our CSS is going to load in instantly. So by having the CSS set the size rather than the image, it forces the pages scroll position to be properly located, if you will. So this is something to keep in mind. In the case of the chat room, we had like an infinite scroll. And as I added more things to the top, the images and the videos would load in. And because they were different sizes, it caused the scroll bar to pop all over the place. So you'd like get a new message and then you have a bit of a buffer down here and a bit of a buffer up here. And then you'd have to scroll down. I fixed that by just giving each thing a static size. That might not be applicable for you, but it is something to be aware of. So our image tag is going to be a post.file because that's what our thing is called. And then in here, you can even give this a class. So in here, I said this was a message image, which allows you to style the image itself. Okay, so if the post.file.image, then we check this, but we don't want this to end right here. Instead, what we want to do is say else if the post.file.video, question mark. So if this is a video, then we want to do something else. And in this case, just like we have this, oops, just like we have this image tag, we also also have a video tag, video tag. Uh, but the problem in here is if I do post.file for our video tag, and then I'm going to give this a class of message dash video, uh, this isn't going to work. So let's take a look at this real quick, assuming I did this correctly. I'll refresh. This works. Let's go back to posts click new post and here I'll say test two. And this time I'm going to choose a video file. I have this seven second video clip. I'm going to click create post. And here you can see the asset blah, 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 blank is not present in the asset pipeline. The reason is we can't just use a post.file. We actually have to use a URL for helper to get the path to the file. And then if we do this and we come back to our posts, we can scroll down and now our video is here. I have to zoom out a lot because it's a 4K clip. But the problem now is I can't see what the video, or I can't press play on the video. To do this, you have to right click and hit show all controls. And then that, that lets you press play. Of course, this is going to be really loud. So I'm going to turn down the volume. But if I click play now, you can see that it plays just fine. So how do we get those controls to show by default? Well, you can come into your video tag and after you have the actual message video, just hit controls colon and then the empty string. And now if you come in here and you refresh, you'll see that the controls are visible by default. And then if I mute this, so we don't have to be subjected to the awful sound, it works just fine. Okay. So that handles videos and images. What happens if you have a podcast and you want to show your latest podcast episode for this, we can just say else if, post.file.audio. It's amazing what comes built into Rails. And then here we can say this needs a audio tag with a URL for of the post.file. And we'll give this a class of message dash audio. And the reason why I gave this one a class of message dash audio uh, was because you didn't really have icons for some stuff. If you wanted them, I just gave them a bootstrap icon. And then I forced them to have like a little play button icon as the file if you weren't able to preview it in a specific area. Now for this, this will actually work just fine. If we come over here and we click a uh, new post, we scroll down actually. So if I hit new post, I say audio for this one. We choose a file. We can choose this two second audio file. I'll click create post. It's not visible here, but if we scroll back and scroll down, Oh, it's not actually not visible at all. 
And the reason is we actually need the controls in here. So if we put the controls for the audio file and then we refresh the page, oops, then we scroll down, we now have a audio file. So I guess for this one, you just need the controls. There's just no other option. So if I press play, you can hear that that works just fine. Now the final catch all that we have here is what happens if it's a different file type. So if it's any other file type, we just say else, and then we do a link to the post.file.file name with a URL for the post.file. And then we give it a class of message dash file, just in case you want to style it. And we can come back here, click new post, say test four. I don't actually know if we're on the fourth one, but it doesn't matter. And let's attach, I don't know, let's attach a Premiere Pro object just to show you that it works with anything. So you attach it, you then get a link uh, and it'll work here too because it's being displayed through the partial and I click play, that's my bad. But if you now click on this, it'll prompt you to download it. And then you can see that I've been modding Minecraft with all of the files that are in my downloads folder. Well, that's gonna do it for this video. Hopefully it was helpful and I guess I'll see you in the next one.